Good morning and welcome to episode 2 of Lundy Guillemot's 2009. This is a summary of the videos from the 3rd of June in 2009 when the first chick appeared on my ledge at St Philipstone Lundy. The first chicks are very small so they're quite difficult to see and often the only thing you see is a small movement underneath the um, adult's wing. Uh, so the bird in the centre of this picture uh, has, you can see some movements underneath the left wing on the top. Sometimes it's just the adult moving its wing, but sometimes you can see a little edge of a beak poking out from underneath where the adult's got the chick tucked underneath for warmth. Very occasionally you can actually see the chick like here when the chick is being repositioned and you get a small glimpse of the chick underneath the adult. It's still quite small and sometimes when you see the end of the beak you see a little white dot on the end which is the remains of the, the egg tooth, uh, the hardened calcified uh, point at the end of the beak which helps the chick to break out of its egg. I've been following this particular ledge for 10 years uh, and each site, each pair has got an identification letter. Uh, so I've also identified the chicks by giving them a name related to that identification letter. Uh, so this year the chick for um, site Jeff, the chick for site J is called Hereth. Um, I chose um, towns in Europe for this year's, as a theme for this year's chicks. I'm not the only one watching the chicks. Um, there's plenty of gulls and crows around, some of them flying over on the search to find eggs or chicks. And you can see all the adults moved around and pointed towards the direction that the gull was moving in. And here, if you look carefully, there's going to be a bit of eggshell falling from above. There's another ledge of guillemots above this site. Uh, and that could have been uh, a gull managing to get an egg there, or pushing an egg off, or, or possibly even uh, a, a chick hatching and its adult um, pushing the eggshell off the top of the, the ledge there. Um, here you see another egg from this colony. Um, some sites are easier to see the chicks um, and the eggs. Um, this site, site G, it's got quite a bit of space between its neighbours uh, and therefore it's one of the ledges where I quite often see a, an egg. Uh, some of the other sites um, Q underneath on the lower ledge and B further along to the left out of picture here uh, are more difficult. Uh, but it's nice to, to see the eggs and, and see the, the different colour variations. If I can't see the eggs. Uh, I have to make do with watching the behaviour of the adults and seeing whether they they look like they have something precious underneath them. Once you've watched them for quite a few years, you tend to notice this difference in spin behaviour. The other time to see them is when the adults are preening, and they'll quite often move the the egg when they've finished preening themselves. Uh, but sometimes it's only a glimpse, like here with the egg underneath um, one of the adults on site E. Most of the pairs on the ledge this day, uh, there's only one member of each pair and the other one's out to sea. Uh, but on occasion the other adult comes back, flies in and, and greets its partner. 
As you can see, it's got an open bill, so there's no fish in its mouth this time. And they do a little greeting call. Um, you can tell which one's been at sea and which one's been sat on the ledge for a while uh, by the the colour, um, the cleanness of the birds. So the one that's been at sea is nice and clean and well preened, whereas the one that's been sitting on the ledge, possibly overnight, uh, is more heavily soiled. There's another ledge above this ledge, so uh, it's best sometimes to be the bird at the top of the ledge because um, Guillemots do everything on the ledge uh, and the lower birds are dirtier. Um, and then after a while the pair will change over the incubation duties uh, and the first bird will, will fly off. Again here's sight, um, bird returning to sight at R. Again open bill to start with, so no fish. Again, you see the, the cleaner bird swapping over incubation duties with the more soiled bird. Can't actually tell whether there's a, ch a chick or an egg here. Uh, it's probable that it's an egg. Um, less likely that there's a chick because the adult didn't bring a fish. Sometimes the, the first sign you know that there's a chick underneath a pair of adults is a, a fish coming back. Um, and then that fish disappearing very quickly as it's eaten by the chick. And then the first bird R then flies off about 45 minutes, uh, 47 minutes after it arrived. Um, one of the things I've been measuring over the years that I've been studying this ledge is the amount of time uh, both adults are on the ledge um, with the chick or with the egg. Um, the, the longer they stay, um, the less hungry they are and the, the less food the chick needs. Um, so I keep a track of how many minutes the, the birds are on the, the ledge. Um, when they start feeding the chicks, they can come back uh, and only stay a, a minute or so, or sometimes they'll stay for for the whole time that I'm watching. Uh, the bird flying off here is member of um, pair I, and one of this pair has a metal ring, but not this one that's just about to fly out. Um, this one was ringed as a chick over at Great Salty off the, um, sorry, not the one that's flying off, the one that's in the top right hand corner has a metal ring on its leg and it was ringed as a chick over in Great Salty off the Wexford coast. Um, this pair at the front in the bottom right, um, I call them pair T. I've seen them with an egg once in four years, uh, but I'm not actually sure whether this is it's a proper pair. Um, as well as the regular visitors to the, the site, uh, sometimes you get unidentified birds coming in for a, a few seconds or a few minutes and then flying off again. You've just got to tell by the behaviour between the, the pairs. So the, there has been some interaction between these two birds but now they're sort of ignoring each other. Usually you'd expect uh, more preening, more calling between the pairs. Uh, but you never know. Guillemots seem to recognise each other better than we do. So it looks at the moment, um, in a minute, that this bird that flew in just now is going to fly out again. And it almost looks like it's been pushed off the ledge by the other bird. Which makes me think that it wasn't a pair. Sometimes there's fights between birds um, 
on the right is the, the bird that just pushed out the other pair, the other partner. Uh, and on the left is a, a bird, a member of pair P. Um, guillemots have to be have a balance between being aggressive uh, and protecting their chicks and their eggs from predators, uh, and being communal so that they have other pairs on the same ledge as them that are also helping to protect their their chick and their egg. Um, so they will have fights, um, sometimes quite vicious fights. Um, but then after a while they may stop fighting and then five minutes later you might see the pair that was fighting preening each other um, there's various little behavioural um, adaptations to colonial living uh, sometimes at the end of a fight you'll see birds um, stop and preen on the other side of their bodies um, just moving the bill away from a, a place that might cause aggression Here's another unidentified bird flying in. Um, again, no response from any birds next door um, to say that it's a member of a pair. You're my mate. Uh, just looking around, seeing what's available. And the bird at sight M pokes it and pushes it off. This one was more interesting. A bird flying from uh, falling in from the top right. There's a, a narrow sort of shelf on the top right of this ledge where birds tend to congregate. I'm not sure if any of them are related to the ones. But this one actually came in with a fish exactly to the site um, J where they where the first chick was. Um, so I'm thinking that that bird had a fish, it wasn't a mated pair, uh, but it felt the need to feed a chick. So it, it attempted to, to fly in, see that chick, give it its fish, uh, but the adult wasn't having anything. Um, so it flew away again. So that's some of the behaviour that we saw, the highlight of the behaviours um, for that day, the 3rd of June. 2019. Um, all the the unedited video for this day, all two hours of it, is also now on YouTube. If you want to have a look through that and see more of the behaviour uh, and see it in um, as it happened rather than edited edited together like I have now. And the next set of videos will be coming out on the 6th of June. Thank you very much for watching and. Enjoy the videos.